And coming up, we count down the seven ways that liberals want to control and ruin your life. What are they? That's coming so up. Under President first. Obama, big government has gotten even bigger. We've seen banks, car companies, and frankly, an entire healthcare industry taken over by the federal government. And from where I sit, there appears to be no end in sight. My next guest says it is all part of the left's plan to control each and every aspect of your life, where you live, how many kids you have, what you listen to on the radio, and it can all be found in this brand new book. It's called Control freaks seven ways liberals plan to ruin your life he is an author editor-in-chief at cnsnews.com terry jeffrey is back with us in studio terry congrats on the book hey, good to see you thank you sean control for you know this is what the left always says about the right that oh we want to control a woman's right to choose that uh conservatives want to you know ram their values down their throat you, it seems like you're playing a little political jujitsu here yeah there's no doubt about it i mean it's a very ironic thing that liberals really don't believe in liberty and when you start looking in very practical terms sean this way in the book who's going to decide the major decisions in your life and if you look at the liberal agenda everywhere you turn they want government to start telling you what to do where you live what kind of car you drive they want to control your retirement income they want to control your health care they want to control your property and all sorts of different ways including taxes it, it's also but let, let's start with for example you know coercing people out of their cars and I, th I thought about this as I was reading this because I've always known it I've always said that I think liberals would only be happy if we're in a Yugo or, right. or riding our bicycle to work meanwhile you know Learjet liberals are flying around in their private jets like Al Gore we caught on tape in his private jet and then jumping into a limousine of all things um, but they do want, but they really do want to control the cars we drive. They, they sure do. And you know that phrase, coercing people out of their cars, that came right out of the mouth of Ray LaHood, the Secretary of the Department of Transportation, a former Republican mm -hmm. member of Congress. He, he was asked, is his livability initiative, this program that the Obama administration has, is that a way to coerce people out of their cars? He said yes. When I started looking into it, Sean, what I found is there's this coherent ideology, for example, promoted by the Sierra Club and others, where what they'd like to do is use zoning, taxes, and regulation to force everybody into urban living environments where they live in densely huh. packed housing within walking and biking distance of a mass transit system oh. so they're not out there living on a single family home on a half acre of land driving your own car how do you make the case that they want to control your retirement now we know that that social security i mean they're now debating means testing raising the retirement age I've always said probably till the day before you die, you'll, well, get, you'll get your first check. You know, the, the, the guy who's sort of the intellectual godfather of the Social Security movement in America, Henry Rogers Seeger, he was a Columbia University economics professor. He actually argued in his book, which was behind the Social Security movement, posted on the Social Security website now, the Americans shouldn't save. That if they're going to live past 70, they should, they should completely be dependent on government for their income. Fact is... The majority of Americans in retirement, Sean, get the majority of their income from the federal government through Social Security. So most of us... So they control it. That's right. They control our income and, and, when we and retire. on top of it, they bankrupted it. But that's a that, separate issue for a separate right. another day. And they control Medicare, your health care. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to extend basically the idea of Medicare to people right down to the moment they're born. Mm -hmm. So you're dependent on government. You don't control that aspect of your right, life. So retirement, health care, but also speech. When right. you think about it, liberals, you know, we saw this in this journalist issue they literally wanted to use the power of government to shut down the fox news channel we we've chronicled or well chronicled the the issue of of trying to control and silence talk radio through right. the so-called fairness doctrine which is anything but fair exactly well you know if you look at the history of the federal communications act and the federal communications commission when congress first set it up even democrats from congress are saying we cannot give power to the government to censor speech on the radio it's actually in the law but then you have bureaucrats especially under roosevelt who expanded the power of the government beyond the law to try and shut down conservative talk radio and they would like to do it again i yeah. sean i think they know they can't do it in the fairness doctrine what they want to do is redistribute ownership of radio well, stations. They, they'll find a way to do it, and right. they'll come up with wh whatever whatever means they can to do that. There's one other thing here. Did you see the issue the other day about a school district that literally wanted to give condoms to elementary school kids? Because you talk about this, the culture wars are just so 90s, as you refer to it, but um, that they literally wanted to give co contraceptives to kids, and parents couldn't even opt out. Right. I so, heard, I heard so, a little bit about that issue. And what I talk about in my book, this yeah. is the final chapter, is I, I believe the ultimate strategic goal of the left in this country is to control the hearts and minds of our children. They want to be able to teach their values to our children, prevent us from teaching our values. In the, in the Esterbrook Elementary School, Lexington, Massachusetts, they were, te they were teaching kids by reading them a book called King and King in second grade that same-sex marriage is okay. Mm -hmm. 
The parents brought it to the courts, and the U.S. Federal Appeals Court in Boston said mm -hmm. the schools didn't even have to tell the parents that they're going to do this. It, well, the same thing with giving contraception. I yeah. mean, in that sense, they think they're smarter than parents. They, they think they should. They would decide what we listen to, what shows we get to watch. Right. They would decide what cars we get to drive. They would get to decide what kind of houses we can build, whether or not they're big or small. That's where property rights come in. Right. Well, that's too big. You can't build that house on the property. It's none of your business. That's uh, right. You know, and then they charge enormous taxes on top of it. Why don't we just hand our kids over to the government and say, here, you raise them, well, because they, they think they know better well, anyway. they would like to do that. I mean, classic example of the liberal mentality, President Barack Obama killed the school choice program in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So, you know, families that don't have a lot of money in Washington, D.C. are now trapped. They have to send their kids to the public schools. He sends his kids to the most expensive school <laughs> in the course. city. That's called Learjet liberalism. Yep, freak. control freak. Right. Control, control freak. freak. Seven ways liberals want to ruin your life. Right there. And it's on Amazon.com yes. and in bookstores everywhere tomorrow. Thank you very much.